Crosstube. It's Christine from Stitch All The Things. Um, I had someone message me on Instagram, Tina. Hi, Tina. Um, she asked me if I would demonstrate how I put my Chatelaine fabric. You can see my work right here. Um, how I mounted it on my Roller Frame Scroll rod set. And um, my fabric is really big. My fabric is cut at 31 inches square. Um, and so I ended up buying 31 inch, no, 32 inch, oops, make a bunch of noise, um, scroll rods. When you buy them, you have to buy the rods. Sorry, I had to sneeze. When you buy these, you have to buy the rods and the end bars separately. So I decided because I need I personally want a half inch gap on either side of my roller frame because I've actually ordered fabric that was the exact size of the roller frames, which is, I think, recommended. And sometimes, you know, they don't cut fabric straight. So when you go to um, load your fabric up, if it's off even a little bit and it rolls into this area, it bunches up and you it will not be smooth. So I always give myself half an inch on either side and the good thing about going a little bigger is that you can always put smaller fabric on this. These are a bit unwieldy because they are 32 inches long. And I did that on purpose. This is a big project for me, so I need them. So when you get them, your scroll rods will have a, the number 32 inches on one end. And on the other end, they'll be color coded. Red. Or black and I'm sorry if the lighting is a bit off I don't have a good light behind me and maybe I should try and pause and do that I think I will pause and move the lighting around okay I'm not exactly sure how that worked because it's gonna where I put the light it's gonna give me some shadow over here but red black the reason they do these is these rods are split and you need to keep your split rods the same rods together because they have tacks on one side and holes that line up perfectly on the other side. So you always want to make sure the color ends end up together because if you flip this around, it's not going to seat right. The holes are drilled for the other way around and the brads are put in. So make note of that. Um, and these tacks, what they do is you load your fabric up you um, put it over the tacks and you put this on it sandwiches it in there so you're not having to sew it or glue it tape it or whatever so um i've got my rods ready now your end bars you can order whatever size you want and the size i ordered is written on them 15s but the distance between doesn't mean it's 15. it just means from here to here is 15 inches and I actually have mentioned, measured the distance before. I cannot remember what they are, but I will write the distance from the inside holes and the distance from the outside holes, and I will put that in the box below. Okay, so when you first get your fabric set up, um, you want to put your end bars on each side. Oh, I should note, the end bars are put together with a bolt and then there's a washer right under this bolt and then a wing nut. So you're gonna take your wing nuts off and I'll do that in a minute. And then I put these, it's normally not such a big problem. I don't know why it's sticking today. Um, I just gotta slide them up evenly. Bottom down, because I load my fabric right side up first. Um, I didn't know this right here is a little magnet strip so you can set your needle there. Okay before you load your fabric up I do want to make a note about selvages and the Zweigert you can see has that orange stripe running through. You never ever ever want to load your selvage put the brads on the selvage part. The reason is is this is tightly bound here. There's extra um, threads and everything binding your selvage. So this can take a whole lot more stress and tension than your regular fabric. So if you load your selvage up on it and then you're twisting and twisting and twisting to get the tension, you'll get a rip right along the edge 
because the fabric can only take so much tension, the selvage can take so much more. So I usually keep my selvage on because I use the edge of that as a guideline to keep my fabric straight when I'm loading it on. And it is hard to, to do that on a bigger piece of fabric. You may get it a little crooked and so you may have to readjust on your, uh, on your rods as you, as you go on. So I'm gonna take these off. I always find a big, nice, flat area to work on. A table's perfect. And then I separate my rods, making sure to keep the colored ends same size. Okay, so then I put my fabric out and I start by loading the top. Now, what I do, Vaughn, I should stop and say Vana has an amazing video um, already done on how to load your, your fabrics up. I'm just showing you loading it up on a really long 32 inch piece of wood, but I use Vana's technique. So I would recommend going and seeing Vana because she puts hers on a, a, some smaller rods and that's a really great video to watch. Okay, so I eyeball this I look and make sure there's about half an inch on either side and then I put one side on one brad this side doesn't go quite all the way over to the far brad I don't know why that is because that's not halfway on but basically I pull it taut and using the edge of my selvage and the top edge of this rod, I'll load on the sides, or I'll, I'll tack down the sides first. And then I will go to the middle. Now the middle likes to bow up on me. So I have to pull that down and I will I'll push on the two middle and then what I'll do is just keep an eye on my selvage edge. The selvage is really cheating because it really does help me and then just press down all the way across and I can see I got this side higher than I had it last time. Um, once you put these whole the the thing on you'll have some little holes especially on even weave where you did it before the even weave holes will usually close back up. If you do it on Ada, they may not. So just make sure this is still about the same edge there. And then because I pulled taut to begin with, I can just pop these down. And you don't want too much wavy up top because those waves will, they'll, um, they'll go down your fabric. So when you go to roll it tighter, um, I can see a wave there. It's not really this complicated. I'm just making a bit more complicated than it needs to be right at this moment. As per usual, I'm christining it. I'm trying to find my, um, holes from the last time because I know I loaded it on fairly straight and it was working out good. Okay. Once you've got that fabric on there, you just making sure you still got your colored ends together if you were moving your rods around and whatnot and you just push that down now what i do is i will take my fabric and put the excess up out of the way get my bottom frame close to this and the reason why is i want to make sure that my fabric is going to be loaded in the same area if i put it too too far one way or the other then when i load my fabric it's going to load diagonal it's going to load wrong so i like to get and make sure that the bottom edges here load up on this rod pretty much the same as they did the top so i want that fairly well in the same place so this is still the front side as you can see there's my front stitching this is still the front i just kind of Put it up out of the way make sure my 
my um this little indent right here is about even with the other one now i don't have a selvage here to make sure it's straight when i cut my fabric i made sure my fabric was cut straight and i also have already loaded this up so you can see i actually have a line to go down but when you're putting this on make sure your your threads your cross and your on grain and your cross grain threads are straight um that will help you just by looking at your fabric and that's not right but right about here i want to get the end on about the same place and again taut holding it taut and then i'm going to put the middle down like i said that middle likes to bow up once you've got it taut on the end and then just press down all the way across one side at a time so the middle one way and the middle then the other way be careful not to poke your fingers those little brads are hard or hard sharp okay so you can see my fabric is pretty well in the same place on both sides now here comes the part i start to roll these up and this can get just a little tricky not too tricky i think the trickiest part is getting getting that um on the rod now i roll these and i do try to roll them tight like i'm rolling up a scroll until i know where i want them here now the good thing about these bigger um, end bars is they do give you multiple places to to put your uh, load up your rods and in this case i want as much well area as much stitching space is available so i'm using the two end pieces this is the bottom so i put I load these in here and you can see how if you had fabric over overlapping right in here there's no room for extra fabric to be in there so you really want to make sure you're you've got a little room there in case your fabric has wavy edges and we know that happens right so both sides put them in there now check again i will usually like to secure the bottom in there then get my top and roll it taut into place and then I'm going to stick the top bars down in there I'm going to lift the bottom up flip it over Oops, that came out it's okay it happens then put your wing nets on but don't put them down tight oops all right so this was the top i think <laughs> doesn't matter whichever's the top you get your piece right in the middle or wherever you want it. That's put some of these down a little tight. I definitely want my medallion right in the middle. So I'm going to tighten the top down. Then I'm going to put this back over to the front and I'm going to tighten this bottom. I'm just going to roll all the way along. I'm going to carefully flip this over, holding this tension. Keep rolling if you need to. And then tighten down right here. Now these will go tighter. There's actually a little wooden tool. I forgot to get it that you can use, but Vana suggests using like a, um, a, uh, not like a, uh, a laundry clip. Why can't I think of the name of that thing right now? Mom brain. And you just hook it on there and turn it. I will use pliers sometimes and just put the pliers right here on the wing nuts and 
turn them, but you want to tighten everything. And then you've got your thing. And I mean, it's pretty tight. There's some areas where it's a little loose right here. I'm okay with that because this is big. And notice that it will bow just a little depending on how big your rods are. Um, you can see just a tiny bit of bowing here. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, but just you need to note it. Sometimes I find that if I'm able to get the split in the rod vertical and have it line up with this that I don't get as much of a bend in the rod but you're not always going to get that vertical um, because just of how you roll up your fabric. So that is how I put this fabric up on a big big old roll of frame scroll rod set. Um, like I said this is 32 inch rod so I should tell you the measurement goes on the rods inside measurements 32 to 32 here. Um, the end bars, the measurement is from the very end to the very end. So 15 inches here and 32 inches here. Um, when you are done stitching for the evening, always try to remember to loosen up these wing nuts and just unroll your fabric a bit so there's no tension um, you do not want to stretch your fabric out over time that will happen so every night when I'm done stitching whether it's these my Q snaps whatever my Q snaps I'll just roll the the clamps in um, roll of frames I just unscrew these just a bit uh, because it takes no effort whatsoever to roll it right back up and tighten that down uh, Please remember to do that so your work doesn't get too stretched out, your fabric doesn't get stretched out funky. Um, I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments for me below. And happy stitching! Stitch all the things! Bye!